Hi there, in this video I'm going to extend the Forfellow Elevator project which was implemented in the previous video. I wanna connect an HMI to my PLC to monitor the Forfellow Elevator system. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller-based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Okay, this is my design escape. Let me explain its main parts. First, these four buttons can be used to select each fellow. These numbers illustrate the cabin's fellow, and if you remember, the cabin should be stopped 5 seconds at each fellow. During this time, the related door will be open on the HMI escape. Also, based on the cabin's fellow, one of these four indicators will be green. Finally, these arrows display the direction of the cabin's movement. Alright, let me continue the video with this project in Semantic Manager, which was explained in the previous video. Note that I'm going to explain only added settings and program codes related to my HMI. Let me start with the hardware configuration. Okay, in my hardware configuration, I've enabled the second port of my CPU to make a connection between my PLC and HMI. Remember, the first one was connected to the Semantic Manager software installed on my computer. Let me double click on the second port. As you see, a network was created before. Otherwise, you can click on new button to create a new network. Okay, any networks can be selected to see or change its settings. For example, this value was selected as the transmission rate in my network. Or my PLC address number is 2. Note that each device inside a network has a unique address. Now let me save the hardware settings and then explain all changes in my program codes. As you know, PLC starts its work from OB100. Let me open it. Inside this block, I only added this part to reset these memories which were used inside the other functions. As you know, after OB100, OB1 will be executed continuously. Let me open it. As you see, a new function, fc2, has been added to my previous program. It prepares some data which should be displayed on the HMI. Also, I've changed the first network, fc1, a little. First, let's open fc2. As you see, the second function includes two networks. The first one stores the cabin's position which is a number between 0 and 4 on this memory, MW30. This address was used inside my HMI to display the cabin's position. Well, inside the second network, these memories have been connected to these four doors on the HMI screen. For example, if the cabin reached the second floor, it will be stopped 5 seconds by one of these two timers. So, this bit of my PLC memory will be enabled when the cabin must be stopped 5 seconds at the second fellow. Now, let's open the first function, FC1. Remember, it was explained in the previous video. Okay, inside the first function, I've only added these four addresses below these four inputs. Note that I've connected these bits of my PLC memory to these four buttons on the HMI screen. So I can use the four buttons 
to call any flow like these four inputs which were tested in the previous video. All right, I've explained all changes inside the Semantic Manager project. Now, let me run my PLC and test the project. After that, I'll tell you important points about my screen and also how a simple screen can be designed by PM Designer software. As you know, when I start my PLC, the cabin should go to the first fellow in the beginning. If you remember from the previous video, the first input detects whether the cabin reaches the first fellow or not. Let me enable it. Now, the cabin is located on the first fellow and the elevator system is ready to be used. Let me call the second fellow using my push buttons. And also I can select the third fellow, for example, using the design buttons on the screen. Now let me zoom in on my HMI screen because the PLC program was tested in the previous video. All right, the cabin is located on the first fellow. And if you remember, I selected the second and third fellows. And now the cabin is moving up. Okay, the cabin has reached the third fellow. Now, let me call the other fellows. As you see, now the cabin is moving down. First, it must go to the second and first fellow, and then go to the fourth fellow. Now, inside the Semantic Manager software, let me open the second function, FC2, to see its relationship with the HMI screen. As I mentioned before, it just prepares some data which should be displayed on the HMI screen. Okay, let's continue. Well, the first network of the second function stores the cabin's position number on MW30, which was connected to these dynamic displays. Okay, the next network determines the first five seconds that the cabin must be stopped at each fellow. Okay, I tested my HMI screen, and now let me tell you important points about that. My HMI can be programmed by PM Designer software. First of all, I've connected these buttons to these addresses which were used to call a fellow inside the first function FC1. Also, this numeric display, which can be added from here, is connected to this memory, MW30, which includes the cabin's position. These two arrows are connected to Q0.7 and Q0.6 to display the direction of the cabin's movement. As you know, a bit of memory has only two modes, on or off. As you see, I can determine color, text, or picture for each mode inside the properties window. For example, I selected a black and green arrows to display the Q0.6 is on or off. Remember, this digital output moves up the cabin. Overall, other objects can be added into the screen and also can be connected to another. Now, let me create a simple project to explain how my HMI can be programmed and connected to my PLC from the first step. As you see, I need to write a name for my new project. After that, I'll determine my HMI model. Well, in this window, I'm going to create a link between my HMI and PLC. As you know, I'm using a S7300 CPU of Siemens company. Now, I can modify the created link's parameters. For example, if you remember, inside the Semantic Manager software, 
I selected this transmission rate for my PFC whose address number was 2. Now, if I click on the finish icon, the new project will be created. Note that if I click on the link icon on the left side, the connection settings between my HMI and PLC can be adjusted. Also, I can use the internal memory of my HMI. Now, let me add a button. I want to connect it to an internal memory of my HMI. Okay, let me change some graphical properties. Now, let me add a bit RAM to my screen and connect it to the bit of my HMI memory which was used for the button. In consequence, this button will be able to turn on the inserted bit RAM because both of them have been connected to the same address. Well, to test the created link between my HMI and PLC, let me use a NAMIC display and then connect it to MW30 of my S7300 PLC through the created link. Remember, MW30 indicates the cabin's position. Now, let's compile the design screen and then transfer it to my HMI via its USB port. Okay, as you see, I can only set on the bit lamp using the button. Let me go to the PM Designer software and change the operation mode of the inserted button to momentary on. Now, again, let me compile and transfer the design SKV. Okay, my uh, HMI screen has been transferred. Uh, let me test the button and beat lab. Now let me change the cabin's position to check the created connection between my PLC and HMI. All right, I added an HMI to the four flow elevator project, which was implemented in the previous video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below. 
and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.